Hi, I'm Mark Coniglio, the creator of Isadora, and this is a MIDI keyboard. That's because in this tutorial, tutorial 11, we're going to learn how to connect a MIDI device as an input so that you can use it to interactively control aspects of Isadora. We're going to look at mostly the keys here, which will be seen by the node on watcher, and these knobs, which are continuous controllers that will be seen by a module called the control watcher. So just keep that in mind because I'm not going to be showing the keyboard. And to start with, I would like you to take a look at the patch I've already created. I've got a counter, a movie player, and a projector. These are set at the defaults right now. But the important thing I want you to change is the minimum of the counter should be 1, the maximum should be 15, and the mode should be set to wrap. Right now it says limit probably if you just brought it in, but I want you to change it to wrap. Why 1 to 15? Because I've already prepared this by importing, uh, well, actually 16 movies, but that's okay. We're going to use uh, 15 because we're going to use this counter to allow us to move from movie to movie. Counter is very simple. When you click the add button, it counts up by one. You hit the sub button, it subtracts and goes down by one. So watch now as I simply trigger the add button manually. Number two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now we've gotten to the end, and this is where the mode input is important. When I click this again, instead of stopping, which is what happens when it's set to limit, it's going to wrap around and start back at 1. And there we are, it's 1. So that's just that little part of the patch, but we're going to now hook it up so we can use the MIDI keyboard to control it. Okay, so first step, we need to make sure that the MIDI keyboard is actually attached. Uh, follow the instructions on the manufacturer of your MIDI interface or your MIDI keyboard, whichever, uh, whichever connects directly to your computer to install the proper drivers. Every MIDI interface needs some kind of driver for it to work properly. I'm using a, a machine called the uh, Traveler. That's my MIDI interface, and that's the thing I install the drivers for. Once you've done that and you connect it all up, start as Adora. Then you go to the communications menu and say MIDI setup. Now, currently, nothing is assigned here. But basically, Isadora can read from as many as six MIDI devices coming in and six MIDI devices it can send to six MIDI devices. So to start with, we're going to try and get this keyboard coming into Isadora. To do that, I go to port 1 under the column labeled input ports and say Traveler MIDI port. The Traveler only has one MIDI port, so just by choosing that one item, I now know that I have caused Isadora to listen to that device. But there's always tricky getting these things working, and so it's really helpful to have some feedback. So I'd like you to go to the Windows menu and say Show Status. Now, you'll notice that in the Status window is a section dedicated to MIDI, showing you MIDI input. So just to be specific about my scenario, and it might be slightly different for you, I have a MIDI keyboard, and the MIDI out of that is going to the MIDI in of the Traveler, which is my MIDI interface. The Traveler is connected by a USB cable to the computer. So the data is going from the keyboard into the MIDI interface and then into the computer. That's the routing that we have. But we want to prove that that's working and so we do the MIDI setup as I showed you and then we show the status and now I'm going to press some keys on the keyboard and I want you to watch just here where it says last message. And fortunately it's working for us. You can see that as I press different keys on the keyboard it's telling me the pitch here, and then also the velocity, which is how hard I hit the key, like here is harder, 127. We also have some feedback up here, a little indicator light telling us MIDI data is coming in. So now we can actually start to use it. All of the MIDI actors are contained in group number three, which is the MIDI group. And the first thing we want to do is use the node on watcher to trigger it to move forward one movie using our counter actor. So I bring out a note on watcher and if I press a key on the keyboard it triggers. That happened to be key 49. I press another one, that's key 66, it also triggers. In fact, no matter what key I hit, it actually triggers on every single one. Why is that? Because right now in its default state, the note on watcher is set to look for every input port, every MIDI channel, every pitch and every velocity. In other words, there's no limitation. If there's a node on coming into the system, this actor will see it. 
That's not usually the way you want to use these things, though. Usually you want to have a specific key or maybe a range of a few keys uh, is what causes something to happen. So I want to set that up. I want to have the lowest key on the keyboard cause me to move forward one movie. So I'm going to press that key right now. I want you to watch just here where it says pitch. You'll see that the number changed to 48 as soon as I hit the key. That's because that is actually one octave below middle C, and that's represented by the number 48. So if I go to the pitch input of the note on watcher, and instead of 0 to 127, which is every possible MIDI pitch, I type 48. Now, if I press 48, you'll see a trigger here, and the velocity changes, right? But if I hit any other key on the keyboard, nothing happens, because only key 48 is now seen by this note on watcher. So I now simply take the trigger output and connect that into add. Now, if I press any key on the keyboard except 48, nothing happens. But when I press 48, it moves on to the next clip. Okay? So now I get another note on watcher from the toolbox. And this one, I want to set a different note to get, it, get us to go to one clip less or to go backwards in the list one. Now, again, this one, its default setting is 0 to 127. So let's pick another key. We're going to pick key number 49, which is just the C sharp above the C that I've already used. So I set the pitch of the note on watcher to that. And now I take the trigger output and I connect that into sub. So the low C, I go forward one clip, 9, 10. And the C sharp, which is being seen by this note on watcher, 9, 8, 7, six, five, four. So I have this great control now to be able to go back and forth. So basically the advantage of the note on watcher is that you can actually specify that it's looking for a very specific note. Uh, you can also actually do this another way which we could actually do it by velocity instead. Take a look at this as a different idea. I'm now going to change the pitch so that they both say 48. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the velocity range of the first one to go from 64 to 127. And I'm going to change the velocity range of the bottom one to go from 1 to 63. So in other words, this actor sees pitch 48, but only if the velocity is above 64. This actor also sees pitch 48, but now only if it's from one to, uh, velocity of 1 to 63, which is quite soft. So what I can do now is if I want to go forward a clip, I can hit the key very hard. Or if I want to go backward, I can hit the key quite softly. And you'll see now that I'm actually going backwards. So the inputs of the port channel pitch and velocity allow you to create all kinds of situations where you're looking for specific notes and specific uh, velocities so that you can make, in a way, kind of decisions based on how you're playing a particular note. In the next tutorial, we'll dig into the control watcher, which allows us to apply continuous control in addition to the note on, note off triggers.